Nu är det på det till inget på det till sanktin. Amen. So again today we have um, uh, uh, the saints of the, this time the 40 holy martyrs. Um, and these were, this occurred in the Eastern Empire around the year 314 under the emperor uh, Licinius. Uh, these 40 martyrs were from the 12th Roman Legion uh, and they were given the order to sacrifice to the gods um, before a, a, a battle and they refused, uh, for which reason they were all sentenced to death. Now something about this, these, these soldiers in, in the 12th Roman Legion, uh, this legion was, was called, it had the name, uh, the Legion of Thunder. For about 150 years previous, uh, this same legion, the 12th legion, had been, um, there were a lot of uh, Christians in this one particular legion, and the emperor Marcus Aurelius, uh, likewise, had commanded them to um, sacrifice to the gods. Uh, they refused, and instead, uh, they had asked the emperor, uh, let us pray to God, and, and, uh, and we, will, we will be victorious. Uh, so, um, Marcus Aurelius didn't, didn't uh, um, uh, take action against the legion. They, they did pray, and at that time they were in uh, Germany, uh, and uh, they were suffering from a great thirst. The whole, the whole army was suffering from a great thirst, and this legion prayed to God to, to help them, and a, um, a huge storm broke out, and it rained very steadily over on the side of the Romans, uh, but over on the side of the Germanic uh, barbarians, it uh, um, um, uh, gave a furious hail. Uh, and so that, that assisted them that the Romans had their um, uh, thirst quenched, the barbarians were in disarray, and they won a battle. Uh, so that, and for which reason, uh, because that Roman legion had prayed and that, that storm broke out, they had the name the Legion of Thunder. Uh, so now, 150 years later, these, there are these 40 men in this same legion, the Legion of Thunder, and they're given the order, sacrifice to the gods. But they knew their history. Uh, they knew the men that had come before them. They knew the, um, uh, the legend of their own legion they were in, and they wanted to be faithful to those who had come before them. They wanted to be faithful in memory of those Christians of the past. And so they refused. They refused to sacrifice to the gods, and they encouraged one another uh, to be bold in the profession of Christ. So they were um, imprisoned and uh, told that they were going to be executed. So they, these 40 men uh, out of that legion were locked up, and um, they heard that very first night in prison a voice saying, persevere until the end, and then you shall be saved. Uh, they were put on trial and, and once, ag once again exhorted to give up the faith, but they responded, we will give up everything except the faith. Take not only our military rank, but also our lives, but nothing is more precious to us than our God. Uh, so they were ordered first to be stoned, but apparently um, all the stones missed. They, like, they, couldn't, they couldn't hit these soldiers with the stones, and so some of the stones actually came back and hit the people throwing them, apparently. So rather than accept that miracle and convert, uh, their, their uh, captors concluded it to be sorcery, and so this time uh, they, they were sent uh, once more in prison, and they, they deliberated what to do with them. Uh, once more again, they heard the voice of the Lord that night in prison, he who believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. Be brave and fear not, for you shall obtain imperishable crowns. And so they, they had two, these two heavenly voices, two different nights in prison, strengthening them, encouraging them. And so that next day, they were sentenced to freeze to death in a lake. This is at, the, um, um, at this time of year. So it was very cold, and it was a slow torture designed to break down their will. And that night, they were led out to the freezing waters, uh, but there on the shore, of their own accord, they removed their own clothing and strode boldly out into those freezing waters, encouraging one another to remain steadfast. <clears throat> so in order to entice them away from the faith, a warm bathhouse was set up on the shore, steaming with hot water, as they were, they were standing there in the middle of this freezing lake. Uh, but the martyrs prayed, Lord, we are forty engaged in this contest. Grant that forty may receive crowns, and that we may not fall short of that sacred number. So thus they had prayed. They had two knights in prison, two heavenly voices. They were, they were incurring each other like, like brave soldiers. 
Uh, but during that very first hour of the night, uh, one of the soldiers revealed himself uh, to be uh, um, uh, not truly uh, uh, faithful to Christ. Uh, through weakness, through fear, through selfishness, whatever it may be, he left his companions out of the lake and walked towards the bathhouse. And they're calling to him not to exhort it. You know, we, we, we need to remain steadfast. What is, what is one cold night compared to eternity of, of, of bliss? Uh, but this, this soldier refused, and he walked out of the lake, and he went towards the bathhouse. Uh, but this is the, um, uh, we would say, the cruelty and the deceit of the evil one, for no sooner had this soldier uh, touched the waters of the hot bath, uh, he fell down dead. Um, and thus, he could have completed a glorious martyrdom, but instead, he ended up an apostate, and uh, who knows what happened to his soul. But now the 39 martyrs uh, uh, continued to, to pray and, um, uh, and, and, and to, uh, to believe in God and, and to exhort each other to be faithful. Um, and then it was two hours later, the third hour of the night, uh, the Lord sent them a consolation. Uh, there shone a heavenly light and the water in the lake became warm. And one of the guards watching them, watching over them, had a vision of radiant crowns appearing over the head of each martyr uh, but there were only 39, and he had heard that. He knew there were supposed to be 40. And so this guard, Aglaios, took off his uniform, declared himself a Christian, and strode out into the middle of the water and joined them. And thus they were 40 once again. Uh, so standing there, he prayed, Lord God, I believe in you, whom these your servants believe in. Add me to their number and make me worthy to suffer with them. And uh, thereon a, a 40th crown appeared over his head uh, to the joy and to the amazement of all present. Uh, so thus they continued all night. And uh, the next morning, uh, most of them had died from the, the cold, although some were still alive. Uh, these, these are soldiers in, in, in very good health, uh, along with that recent convert, Aglaius. So these soldiers were taken out of the water, and those who were still alive had their legs broken, and then all were thrown onto a burning funeral pyre, and thus they consummated their glorious martyrdom. Uh, the remains of these soldiers were dumped into the river that their bodies might not be venerated, uh, but the bishop of, of the nearby town of Sebast had a dream in which he was shown the location of the remains, which he then recovered and buried with honor. And in fact, that, that nearby town, Sebast, they're, they're sometimes known as the 40 Holy, holy Martyrs of Sebast, uh, and that is in um, uh, the country of Greece. Um, so thus, thus these soldiers, as I mentioned, con uh, consummated their martyrdom, and it was inspired, as I mentioned earlier, uh, because they knew the past. They, they knew where they had come from. And, and for them, you know, the, these martyrs, it was uh, 300 years of, of uh, nearly, of um, uh, uh, examples and the martyrs of the faith. And, and, and they were, that was so close, it was the year 300. That, that seems ancient to us, but even these martyrs in the year 300, they're looking back 100 and 150 years previous and saying, we can't disappoint those who came before us. How can we be weak when, when, when those, those, those men in front of us, when they were strong? Uh, and so that has to be our attitude. It has to be our attitude that, that we look back in the past and we see these martyrs and we see them from every century and every walk of life. These were strong soldiers, but there've also been martyrs uh, of children, of women, of the, of the aged, of, of, of the ignorant, of, of all kinds. Uh, how can we? we? We have no excuse. We have no excuse not to be strong in our faith. When we have these stories, we hear these stories, we have the benefit of 2,000 years of church teaching, and we know that this is the true faith. When, when these, these early martyrs, this was when the church was still underground. Nobody knew what the Catholic Church was. No doctrine had been defined. There was no catechism explaining to them that this is, this is the one true faith. But, but they were filled with the, the inspiration of God. They knew that. They, 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 they felt that, uh, uh, um, that power of God, and, and they were willing to give their lives for it. Uh, but we who have so much, we who have such great examples, you know, we are so weak in the faith. And it doesn't come, it's not going to come like this these days. Martyrdom for us is not going to come sacrifice to the gods or, or we're going to freeze you to death in a lake. That's not how it's going to be. 
Um, it, it's going to be more subtle. It's going to be give up your principle. It's going to be just come along and do this. Don't worry about your faith. Give up your principles. Oh, we, the church doesn't believe that anymore. That's how it's going to come. And we have to be strong and firm and, 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 and know that the doctrine doesn't change, the church doesn't change, God doesn't change, truth doesn't change, and, and the church does not change her teachings. We know that, and we have to be filled with that conviction. And when it comes time for us not to lose our lives, as I've said so many times, but to lose our, our, our jobs, our fortunes, our, our, our luxuries, our place in society, our reputation, whatever else it may be, are we going to be willing to give those up? Right? These martyrs gave their lives, and we have to be willing to give our life, and anything less than that. Uh, that's what we have to be willing to do. We can't let them down. Uh, those martyrs, you know, they had the, those crowns appearing over their head. All of heaven, right, was, was looking at those martyrs as they gave their lives for Christ. It's, it says that in, 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 in scriptures, the death of the righteous is precious in the eyes of the Lord. It's precious. He's looking down upon us, right? All of heaven, they, they, they're up there. They used to be where we are, and they want us to join them. And, and we, we have to, um, it helps to keep that in mind, in that we're not alone. We may feel like we're, we're the only ones, we're such a small part in the church, and we're such a small part in the world, and, and the whole world is against us. Uh, but the whole important world, the more important world, the next one, all those angels and saints, they know who we are. They know who you are, and they're praying for you, and they want you to join them. Uh, so let us keep that in mind uh, uh, these days. Don't be discouraged about remain steadfast and be willing to suffer everything uh, for Christ. May God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.